Welcome to another episode of the National Cultural Foundation's On Plein Air instructional video series. My name is Mark Lee Clark, and today I will be speaking about and demonstrating linear perspective in an urban space. We are in Bridgetown, the capital of beautiful Barbados. Specifically, we are in Palmetto Square, which is in close proximity to the Parliament buildings, the seat of government on the island. These buildings were erected during 1870 to 1874. Across from it and behind me is the old city bar, which I have chosen to use in this demonstration of linear perspective. It comprises this foreground pink wall, ground floor section, and the first floor dark brown section. I have chosen it because it has the typical characteristics for demonstrating linear perspective. Also, it contains a couple of features that could present some challenges to the beginner. And in this regard, I will point out these and inform on ways to address the challenges. The third reason is that the old city bar is of historic interest as it was the meeting and recreational spot for persons approximately 140 years ago. In this episode, I will be speaking about linear perspective and demonstrating it. If you look at the old city bar behind me, you can see that it is a solid form, meaning that it has height, width, and depth. Therefore, it is three-dimensional. When painting or drawing this structure, the aim is to transfer the image of this three-dimensional form onto a flat two-dimensional surface, which is the canvas or paper. We are actually transferring and creating an illusion of three-dimensionality. One way of achieving a convincing 3D effect is to actually experience it as you paint or draw by employing a method called drawing through. Here, we act as though the object is transparent and drawing lines of what is seen and unseen. In this way, you will be able to represent the features in their true perspective. Let me show you what I mean. Now, If you look at the background roof and you concentrate on the eave, you will see that from the right, it goes through to the left, but it is obstructed by the foreground whitish roof. What we do here is to actually draw a line from the right side onto the left side but you will draw right through the whitish foreground roof. In that way, you will ensure that the roof level is not too high or too low. Additionally, there's another method that artists use to make accurate drawings. It is called the sighting method. You will be able to measure proportions of objects and transfer these measurements to the drawing thereby attaining a high degree of accuracy in, in your sketch. Let me show you what I mean again. For this, we need a long object like the handle of the brush. Here I will hold the brush in such a way that um, the thumb will be able to slide up and down to make the measurement. Importantly, I will have to lock my arm by stretching the handle, by stretching the arm straight out. Importantly also, what I will do is to close the right eye since I am measuring with the left hand. So I close the left, the, the right eye, hold my hand straight out, arm locked, and I will make a measurement of the building. What I'll do here is to put the top edge of the, of the brush 
at the top end of the roof. And my thumb is light up or down accordingly till I, until I locate the base of the building. In this way then, I will transfer the measurement onto the canvas. So we will make a mark here and a mark here by the thumb. That is the sighting method. Linear perspective is a concept, approach, or technique of painting or drawing objects in such a way as to make them look real, accurate, and to have depth. Also, it is based on the illusion that when parallel lines recede into the distance, they appear to get closer. In creating effective linear perspective, an artist takes an additional three things into consideration. One is the true horizon line. This is a horizontal line which runs across the canvas to represent the viewer's eye level. And it delineates where the sky meets the ground. Another factor is called the orthogonal lines. These are imaginary diagonal lines which run from the point on the object on the canvas or paper and meets at one point on the horizon called the vanishing point. If there is only one vanishing point, the perspective is called one point perspective. If there are two vanishing points, it's two point perspective. And if there are three vanishing points, we call it three point perspective. Now, I'm just going to say a little thing on two-point perspective because that's what we will be doing when we draw, when we draw the old city bar. Two-point perspective is understood if you are standing near the corner of a building. You will be viewing two sides of the building. There will be a vanishing point on each side of the building. As in one-point perspective, if lines are drawn from the top and bottom of the corner, the building appears to get smaller as it approaches the vanishing point. This is seen in the old city bar. Here, elements in the building get smaller with distance. For example, the doorways. Understanding linear perspective will enhance the artist's appreciation for the use of lines, space, and the creation of illusion to give accuracy and realism to your work regardless of whether he or she is painting a cityscape, a landscape, still life, or creating a sculpture. Let's go to the demonstration. I am wearing my hat now because the sun is coming out. For this oil painting demonstration, I'm using a small 12 by 16 inch stretched cotton canvas, which I primed with a thin mixture of burnt sienna and odorless turpentine and on which I did a sketch. Initially, I surveyed the scene and thought of my desired composition and how I would utilize the space on the canvas. I had established the horizon line, determined the vanishing points, and then sketched the scene. To determine the horizon or eye level line, I held a straight edge object such as a brush at arm's length and at eye level, and looked through the brush, as it were. This located the true horizon line. This is the line above which all of the lines in the building slant downwards, like here and here, and the lines below the, building, below the horizon line slant upwards, here and here. These lines on the building will correspond to the imaginary diagonal lines that lead to the vanishing points. Of note, in surveying the scene, I observed the three-dimensional nature of the building with its big masses, including the second-story building at the back. I noted that it appeared attached to the big cream building. I observed the relative sizes and shapes of the various parts of the building, the angles, the lengths, of the lines in relationship to each other while well considering and employing all of the previously mentioned techniques. Earlier, 
I mentioned that there are some challenges with this building. One is that it does not have the typical square or rectangular shape. Rather, it is triangular. It is a hip roof triangular structure occupying the entire piece of land on which it sits. All this probably resulted from the initial random use of the area and how the structures on it evolve over time. Consequently, and of note, is the fact that the roof of the foreground section appears to be distorted. Also, the two-story back section is wider than the front section. Nevertheless, it is seen in nice two-point perspective from our view and angle. With respect to the big cream building, note that it has a different orientation from the old city bar and therefore will have its own set of horizon line and vanishing points. Hence, it is sketched in by the siding method. So, it is instructive that the beginner makes critical observations of what is before him or her and employs approaches to sketch the scene appropriately. Note that on the left, there is a narrow alley where people traverse to go to another street. Therefore, it would eventually be good to incorporate a human figure emerging from that area, or maybe one heading there. That would assist with locating the focal point, which will be in that area in keeping with the rule of thirds. The receding street on the right should bring some balance in the lower section of the painting. During the sketching process, it is important to step back to examine the sketch and make any necessary adjustments. Let us check on the perspective lines to see how they converge to the vanishing point. This is the vanishing point in this region here, starting at the base that converges nicely here the top of the building on this side, uh, the roof line, as well as the back section here. So, this confirms an accurate drawing on which I can now apply some paint. The paints that I will be using are titanium white, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow light, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue all on this line. I also have at the side some burnt umber and burnt sienna. Over here on the right I have some liquid, some linseed oil in this container and also some odorless turpentine in this container. Having been satisfied with the sketch in its true perspective, I will now go on to the blocking in stage as well as the finished painting stage. This is the completed blocking stage. During this process, it is important to screen often in order to observe values. I had created a value line of light, mid-tone and dark values for most of the colors in the painting and use a brush to block them in, starting with the darkest darks and the lightest lights. You can glean that the direction of the sun is from this angle. So the face of the building will be much lighted. You can see a variation of values here. The base that I've used for the roof is a gray and the light gray here is of a different value than the darker gray here, which shows that that side of the building is in shadow. You can see variations in values in this brown building. The face of the beige building is lighter than the side of the building because the sun is lighting this to a larger extent than the side of the building. Once the blocking was completed, I added details in order to complete the painting.
This is the finished painting. Here, I presented the doors and the window in the open state. Note that in particular, the side of the building gets smaller as it recedes in the distance. The height of the doors also gets smaller as the doors recede in the distance, as well as the width of the doors. All this is in good linear perspective. Also, I decided to add some people traversing the area and keeping with this usually busy square. It is evident that the focal point is in this region. You can see also that there are some details mentioned or given here. The old city bar sign, the bank sign on the building, and um, some other details. So, in summary, in this painting, I have applied the principles of linear perspective and utilized the techniques of drawing through and sighting to present the three-dimensional nature of the old city bar on the flat two-dimensional surface of the canvas. Do remember that in creating effective linear perspective to establish the eye level or horizon line. Also, Bear in mind that parallel lines on the building recede along imaginary diagonal lines towards the vanishing point. In addition, keenly observe and present the sizes, shapes, angles, and lengths of the lines of the various parts of the building in relation to each other. In these ways, you will be able to produce a convincing drawing or painting of what is before you. Thank you so much for watching another episode and good luck.